All right, next up, another really cool Cincinnati kind of deal. Everybody knows about the subway, right? I didn't know about the subway. This is a lot of people know about the subway. I think there's parallels with the current streetcar nonsense, which I support. Jake. Thanks a lot. There it is. There's the subway. Now, m most of what you see on this diagram right here was actually built. In the surface sections were bulldozed for I-75 in the Norwood lateral. And in the tunnel that still remains downtown, it's obviously still there. And there's really nothing in our city's history which, w w where there are more ridiculous rumors surrounding it than this old tunnel. Well, where did these rumors come from? Did they come from teenagers or, or pranksters or, or something like that? The rumors actually came from the politicians who killed the project. And why did they kill the project? To embarrass the previous administration. So there's Cincinnati in the 1920s while the thing was being built. Okay, here comes the picture of it getting built. There it is. Now the tunnel itself was built for rapid transit trains just like you've seen in New York and all those other places. It was also built for passenger trains and freight trains, which are bigger than our uh, uh, rapid transit trains. Now, the guys who were in control when the thing was built, uh, there he is, uh, Boss Cox on the left and uh, Rudolf Heinecke on the right. These guys are dead, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the guy that replaced them, Murray Seasongood, who's coming up now in one second, there he is, Murray Seasongood went to Harvard. He was an educated man. Uh, they kicked out the, uh, mach the machine, which is a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, gamblers and all those kind of guys. Well, he actually used the exact techniques that they used against them. And uh, he is the man who's responsible for killing the subway. Here's how it looks when he was in office. So you can see it's done underneath Central Parkway. It still had to be finished into the downtown area. He stopped the extension of the tunnel from happening, and the thing has never been used. All right, what's my next slide here? <laughs> So what did he do? He inserted all this doubt into the local media. He made up all these lies which were printed in all these different articles. Now, I got one right here. Not only is the tunnel built extravagantly, but the part already built is inefficient and inadequately designed. So how can something both be extravagant and inadequate? Well, when you went to law school, that kind of stuff makes sense. And he used a, <laughs> well, he used, and what, what did he use to actually kill this thing? There's Harvard subway station, by the way. He killed this thing with a folksy anti-intellectualism. So he went to the top university in the country, but he was acting you know, anti-intellectual, anti which is something that seems to uh, plague Cincinnati to this day. Speaking of dead people, all right, that's, my that's my joke. Sorry about that. So what, why was OJ acquitted? He was acquitted because of folksiness, not DNA evidence. Now here is Murray Seasongood stuff that's in the library. So if you research the subway, you will find stuff that Murray Seasongood wrote, which positions him as the guy, as, as the person who was in the right the entire time. And the machine was always the villain. Uh, part of the reason, part of the way they destroyed this, uh, this effort was by saying, oh, the streetcar tracks are broad gauge, and then the subway is standard gauge, and somehow that was some sort of problem. So they inserted all this doubt into the public's mind. Now here is a Cincinnati streetcar that's in San Francisco now. By the way, pay attention to that bridge in the background. We're going to talk about that in a second. But this was a former broad gauge streetcar in Cincinnati. And now it's a standard gauge streetcar in San Francisco. It's amazing how they can cut down the axle, put the wheel back on, and then it works, right? So here, here's the Bay Bridge in San Francisco, which used to run trains across it. A lot of people don't know that. If you look really closely, you can see third rail electric and overhead electric. So they were able to run different kinds of trains and drew the electricity from different sources on the same bridge. Here you actually see three uh, different train, different uh, railroads approaching the Bay Bridge, and, and this is on the Oakland side. And somehow they were able to make it work in San Francisco. In Cincinnati, it couldn't work, right? So you just insert that doubt in people's mind, and everybody seemed to believe it. Gentleman in the bathroom tonight said, I told him I was giving this talk. He said, oh, the curves were too tight. Well, there's that curve uh, right there that they always said was too tight. Now, it was designed for freight trains and passenger trains. It was no issue whatsoever. They just said it was. They said we were out of money. Here's Cincinnati and its pure cities in the 1930s with the amount of debt that we had. We were actually the best. We were in the least debt of any city in the United States, despite the fact we were already paying off the subway bonds. I think I got one more. Oh, no. Here's the water main. Then they say, <laughs> then they, they put a water main in the 1950s, and now they say, oh, we can't use the subway because there's a water main. Well, the fact is, is that the city and the city's agreement with the waterworks is such 
that the Waterworks has to remove it if the city chooses to use it for the transit purposes. Here are the surface stations being demolished in the 1950s for uh, I-75 and Lower Lava. This is my last slide. I'm going to be on Channel 12, Channel 12 Newsmakers this Sunday, so tune in. <laughs> That's my little program. <laughs>